Hello everybody and welcome to this afternoon's webinar presented by English Australia and Robert Martinez of the Consultancy. Thanks Robert for joining us to present this session. Robert is the Director of Studies at La Cunza International House in Spain and he's also one of the lead tutors for the Consultants E. He teaches courses such as teaching live online and e-moderation. Thanks so much for joining us today, Robert. Thank you very much, Sophie. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. And um, as Sophie said, I have um, a main job, which is as Director of Studies um, at La Cunza International House here in the north of Spain. And also in my free time, no rest for the wicked, um, I also tutor online for the consultancy on um, teaching live online and e-moderation courses and um, other online courses, and I enjoy them very much. So I hope that um, you enjoy this webinar today. Um, I'm gonna start by, um, sharing my screen. So um, as Sophie said, uh, this webinar is uh, teaching live online, so planning for successful online engagement. Um, be, I, when I was putting together the webinar, um, I talked to Sophie about your context and what you do. So I want you to know that I tried to bear in mind the platforms that you're using. We're using here uh, Zoom for all our teaching, but um, um, I know that you guys are using Blackboard Ultra and also Teams, um, and I've used Blackboard Ultra sporadically and also Teams mainly for meetings. So I try to bear that in mind when putting together this webinar so that it is as relevant as possible. Um, it's going to be quite practical. I'm going to ask you to um, use the chat box a lot uh, to interact with you, to find out things about you and what you do. Um, so. Um, I mean, so that you know, okay? I'm going to start this webinar the same way I start all my lessons, uh, whether they are for teaching teens. I'm currently teaching teenagers, uh, B2 level for, uh, first certificate preparation. And I'm also teaching live uh, online courses to teachers uh, in different parts of the world. Um, so all the ideas that I'm using in the webinar are things that I already do that you might be able to say, oh, I could try that in my classroom. So I would start the way I start all my teaching or training, and that is by simply by looking at uh, the learning outcomes. Um, they are super important as you uh, may agree with me. So by the end of this webinar, you will have looked at a lesson framework um, useful for live online lessons, regardless of the platform that you are using, as, as I said before. Uh, many of the ideas uh, you will be able to just take back into the classroom, and if not, you may say, well, the, the idea may inspire you to do something similar in the classroom. Okay. Um, by the end of the lesson of this webinar, you will also have thought about some ways to engage your students online more. I'm sure that you um, may be already doing that and you may want some um, extra thoughts on that. And you will have a list of ideas to take away and back to the classroom. Um, Sophie will share with you the PDFs for this presentation. There is a link there with some extra materials that I have created myself that I use with my classes and my students um, or my own teachers um, and that I'm happy to share with you and that you can then uh, use whichever way you prefer, okay? Right, so about you. Um, can you tell me in the chat box very briefly uh, the type of courses that you are teaching right now online? You can do that in the chat box. You can just very quickly type in the chat box uh, the type of courses that you are currently uh, teaching. Um, Sophie, can people hear? Did they confirm? Because I see in the chat box that it says your question, can people hear, but I don't see any responses. Oh, okay, yep. So all the answers are gonna be coming up in the question pane. For you. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong place. Uh, okay. People can hear. Um, yep, and they're typing in their courses now. Okay. And they're... Okay, I see. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Lots of English for academic purposes. That's what... Um, yes, I suspected. Free sessionals, general English, Cambridge. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay. 
good 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 okay so good news for you is that um i try to keep all the ideas and all the things that i do as general as possible so that whatever regardless of what you're teaching you can say okay well i can do that and adapt it a little a little bit okay so that is wonderful okay bridging general english english for academic purposes pathway uh CSWE cert um wonderful thank you that's really good information for me okay great um so we're not very different because um i you know i'm i'm teaching similar um subjects um exam preparation ielts preparation cambridge exams uh teacher training i was a lecturer for academic english for academic purposes in the pre-sessionals in the uk at sheffield hallam university um so um this is to say i know what you you know how you may feel because i know how i felt when i um was lecturing initially feeling a little bit like oh i need to make this really um as fun as possible as engaging as possible okay so let's move on and um i here in spain we've been now eight weeks into the lockdown so um we've been teaching fully online lessons um uh, live online lessons uh, for eight weeks now. And um, initially we were just in our classrooms with our students. We were preparing our lessons, building report, communicating with uh, the learning outcomes to them. We were consistently applying classroom rules, um, even for adults and on workshops and teacher training courses as well. Um, and we were focusing on their individual pair and group work, right? But then COVID came along um, and we were basically catapulted into teaching online. Uh, now, after eight weeks, um, it's, it's, I can say it's been a very steep learning curve. Um, in the chat box, can you tell me how long you've been teaching fully online lessons? Just uh, very quickly, one, two, three, four weeks. Okay, great, seven weeks. Oh, good, 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 just like, like us here, six weeks, one month two months okay excellent excellent so six weeks wonderful thank you so much only two weeks only one week okay wonderful okay 10 days last semester excellent okay well um clearly for those of you who have uh those of us who have been teaching for almost two months now we're probably feeling a little bit like okay well now we're okay we know pretty much what we're doing we're trying to keep things going um and this is really good and is normal for those of you who have started or maybe have one or two weeks uh the main message is don't worry and we're going to be looking at some things uh some some tips that you can uh, think of, especially if you have just started or have not very much um, experience and you're feeling a little bit apprehensive about the fact that you need to not only teach, but also get to know uh, the technology you're gonna be using, okay? Right, very important, remember one thing, especially for those who are, that are have started maybe one or two weeks only, um, but for everybody in general, remember that what we do is, uh, still even if we are online it's still about people um, so we're still teaching students regardless of the technology um, your students are still the same you are still the same we feel the same frustrations uh emotions and we have the same needs and they have the same needs so uh, keep your cool the important thing is if they're now on the other side of the screen they're still the same people um, there are some things that are going to be very very important though um, and maybe even more important now that we're teaching online and it is that because they can only see us through that window then we need to be even more empathetic we need to um, smile more we need to um, show a sense that uh, exaggerate our sense of, of care uh, simply because that way we're going to minimize that physical distance. OK, uh, very important to articulate more, um, especially with lower level learners, um, especially when you are setting up activities and giving instructions. So make sure that uh, they are on speaker view. Why is that? Because regardless of the platform, you've probably noticed that if you are on gallery view, if you have 10, 12, 15 students or more, then everyone is on a tiny window. So at specific stages, tip number one would be to make sure that they are 
on gal on uh, speaker view so that you are the one in the middle of the of the screen and they are able to pick up extra information paralinguistic information through reading your lips through looking at your face if you're using gestures um, for example i still use very much lots of gestures because um, I'm also a Celta and Delta trainer, so I, I still use very much, tra uh, you know, those gestures to support the instructions that I give. Um, if I if I want them to um, write three things, I would show my fingers at the same time, regardless, just so that uh, because they're on a screen, uh, at least that they can see me on speaker view and they have more information to um, work on and to to draw um, um, understanding from. Okay, um, in your chat box, can you tell me how big are your classes, please? Um, are there 10, 15, 20, 30 students? Um, that's also very important. Okay, okay, 20, 20, 14, 16, 15, A through 10, excellent, okay. 28, wow, that's, that's quite big, okay. Excellent, 2020, okay, eight, 16, wonderful. Thank you so much. So um, clearly the bigger the group, the more uh, we have to try and do to ensure that we reach out to all uh, or as many students as possible during the lessons. Um, so another question for you, how long are your lessons? 45 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour, longer than an hour? This would be very important to bear in mind so that I can um, share specific strategies and tips that you can use. Okay, let's see. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Two hours, four hours. Okay, so I imagine five hours. Wow. So I imagine that those would be some of, uh, you know, there would be uh, periods with a break in between. Uh, I would imagine so. 80 minutes. Okay. Okay, they go from like 50 minutes to five hours uh, on a day. Okay, two times two hours, 60 minutes, wonderful. Okay, great, yes, 10 minute breaks, excellent. Okay, so very important, um, especially the bigger the group. Um, our groups here for my students, I have maximum 12, but with teachers I've had um, up to 25 and currently I have a group of 17 uh, teachers so very important to bear in mind whenever we are online that at those specific stages I want them I have shown them how to uh, toggle between gallery view for plenaries and speaker view when I need to set up those activities and also um, how to um, use the different features in the platforms to communicate with me. Now, let's move on. And um, here there are three possible scenarios and I'm gonna ask you again to use the chat box. Um, three possible scenarios the, uh, for our online teaching. Um, what do you think are those scenarios for uh, when we are doing basically um, teaching online. Um, I'm going to help you with the first one. The first one would be synchronous. So we're doing the lessons live. We're there in front of the camera. The students are on the other side at the same time uh, following the lesson. Um, what about the other two? You want to share with me what you think the other two are? Okay. Very good. Yes. Blended. Excellent. Uh, asynchronous, excellent, yes, yes, absolutely, well done everybody. So the other possibilities of the main scenarios are synchronous, this is what we are doing here in Spain in my context right now, we have, I have lessons twice a week with a group of teenagers preparing for first certificate for one hour and 25 minutes each time, then I have teacher training sessions um, that are uh, once a week with groups of, of teachers. Then asynchronous um, is not my case, but I know that state school teachers are. Uh, I have some uh, some of they some of them are my teachers on our courses. Um, so they are preparing materials and sharing them via email or through their school platform with the students, and then the students send them back. Some of them have once a week seminars, so it's a little bit like uh, blended. Well done. So let's move on. Um, whatever your context and the hours and the materials you're using, please remember the same basic principles for face-to-face -face teaching apply to online, online learning. And I would say even more now that they are on the other side of the, of the screen, simply because they cannot see us 
as when we were in the classroom. So I would say it is super important. Remember, um, smile a lot. I always have my webcam on, even at times when I know that the bandwidth is giving me trouble and I know that um, the video, um, having all the video cam, all the webcams um, on would affect that. I would ask the students to turn them off temporarily, but I would always have mine on. Um, I try and smile a lot. I try and articulate as much as possible to um, balance and redress the, the drawback of being behind a screen. Okay, be empathetic, uh, check on them every now and then. So I very often ask them questions um, related to whatever it is that they're doing. If, they're, if I know that we are on page, I don't know, 20, I would say, um, okay, everyone, if you are on page 65, please give me a tick in the, in the chat box. And the ones that are not paying attention, they will go like, what, 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 what's happening? So it's small things that um, help keeping them involved. Um, right, so let's get into the nitty gritty for this webinar. Um, how can we um, plan for successful online engagement? Now, I've been teaching for 25 years and I still plan my lessons. Maybe not full-fledged, you know, full-blown Celta Delta MA type of lessons, but I still have a very clear running order. I have my structures and above all, I have my learning outcomes. And this is something that we uh, constantly, um, you know, talk about here uh, with my teachers. Now, very important uh, when lesson planning um, to start by um, clarifying expectations. There's an excellent article by Hounsell et al. in 2007 um, in higher education, so very, very relevant to you. I, I strongly suggest that you read it about formative assessment and addressing the balance between formative and summative assessment in high, higher education. Um, and so very important to establish the expectations from the beginning. And what does that mean in my context? Um, we need to tell them what the learning outcomes are at the beginning of the lesson. We need to tell them where the lesson is going right and uh, they need to know that you expect them to have their webcams on I know that can be a problem because if we don't see them how do we know they're they're not actually listening to us or working with us more than listening so um, making sure that those expectations are clear from the beginning um, here what we did to address this right from the start was to make sure that they were informed with one a4 poster during the online lessons uh, or the workshops or the courses that you're doing uh, and this is to say regardless of whether they are young learners or teenagers or teachers um, or adults that they need to do or that they're expected to do those things um, very important in our in my context there is a we shift a little bit the focus of our our lessons um, we want them to be um, before it was speaking mainly, but now that they're online, we want the lesson, the, the students to do as much speaking as possible. So very productive. Writing as well is included in the lesson, but is usually done for set up stages so that then they can do it at home. And then we um, communicate with the students outside the classroom. So. Um, a lesson framework. I'm going to show you the different stages of the lesson framework that we have suggested um, to our teachers and that um, is also part of the Teaching Live Online course that I um, lead uh, at the Consultants E. Um, it's a 20-day course. It's super practical. You would be doing things you're on your own and between you and the other participants right from the start. Um, it's a lesson framework that doesn't necessarily mean it's the framework to use. No, it's suggested and it usually works. Um, obviously, you may need to adapt different uh, stages. Um, we would suggest an agenda where you tell the students, you inform them about what you're doing, um, having a warm up which is related to the previous lesson or the current lesson, um, then a production stage which is going to involve either speaking or writing. However, in a live online lesson, you don't want, if it is 50 minutes or even if it is five hours, you don't want to do only writing, right? If you had four hours, for example, I saw before that some of you teach four or five hours in a day, I would then probably, if that was my framework, I would definitely have, um, you know, one hour 
dedicated to probably essay writing uh, if you're doing um, exam preparation or just English for academic purposes, um, because then I know that I have the other four hours to have a variety of, of, of foci uh, throughout the lesson. If it is a, sh a shorter lesson, clearly, um, I would suggest that, uh, in my experience, what works best is that you set up the writing and then they do it uh, on their own at home and then you go back to it so that you can um, allow for more speaking practice. Now, it's true that you are in Australia and therefore your context is different. Um, we tend to focus more on speaking because here in Spain, English is a second language and they don't have very much, um, they don't have very many opportunities to um, practice it. While you are the opposite, you are in an, in an English speaking country, therefore the focus may not necessarily be on speaking as, as much as it is for us. If it is a long class, then you would definitely have a break. Some of you um, expressed and shared your idea of uh, having, if you have five hours, that there were 10 minute breaks. Absolutely, we do that as well with uh, teacher training courses that are live online synchronously. Uh, we build those breaks in there. Then more production and practice, feedback on production, super important a summary on the lesson, a homework, and a closing activity. Now, you may be saying, ah, that's not going to work for me. Uh, I'm not saying you need to use all these stages. Um, I'm saying is that these stages may help you, may give you an idea or inspire you. What I like about live online teaching is that there is always print rich support for my students on the screen. As you can see right here, I have a picture and then I have the different stages. It's not cluttered. Please, please, please make sure that whatever you have on the screen, even if you use a hundred slides, that they are not cluttered, that they're not busy, that they're not, um, you don't, you want to make sure that your students are supported by the text and not just bored by the text or, or lost by the amount of text. Now, things to um, mention about the lesson framework, very important. Um, and things that we have received very good feedback from students um, of all ages is uh, the summary bit in the lesson, three to five minutes, where you have prepared a summary. This is something you need to do beforehand for your lesson if you know what you're going to cover. The two, three, four points, or maybe the one single point that is summarizing what the lesson is, and asking the students to summarize it or to write a sentence, something I tend to do a lot with my students and they're now, it, it is part of the routine and therefore they're used to it now, is asking them um, towards the end of the lesson in the chat box privately to type one sentence uh, about the summary. Today we did ABC or ABCD one sentence. I give them two minutes and I want it privately because if I don't ask them to send me the message privately, what can happen? Everyone in the chat box. What happens if I ask them, okay, just, just write it in the chat box. What do you think would happen? And what are the implications for me? Just briefly in a sentence. If I just say, okay, everyone now write in the chat box your summer, uh, uh, one sentence summary. What would you say um, is the implication for me as a teacher? Any ideas? Let me double check. Excellent. Yes, 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 yes. All at once. The strongest student. Very good. Yes, is going to be given the ideas. Uh, don't think. Copy and paste. Absolutely. Uh, no one will uh, or someone will just copy. Um, only some people answer. Excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, they copy their feedback. Wonderful. One will say ABC. Absolutely. So I use the chat box a lot and I do it privately. I only use it publicly whenever we are on plenary. We are giving feedback in general as a class. Um, so it's very useful because then as a teacher, I'm able to see who is on the right track and who I need to address without obviously putting them on a spot. Um, then we cover the homework um, on the screen, very clear where it is, what page, what they have to do, etc. And then we usually have a closing activity with can-do statements. I was very reluctant to use this when I came across the idea and I was like, uh, yes, I, I don't really have the time to, to actually do that. However, you don't need 10 can-do statements. All you need is, I now have usually just a slide, the very last slide with the um, thinking of the lesson, I just fill it in 
right before the lesson looking at the topics and then I can do A, B, C, two or three things. And they usually, they have to um, fill in the dots um, on their own. I tend to use that either on a, an external document like a Jamboard, we're gonna look at that in a minute, or a Google Doc, or on the screen with uh, the annotation feature. Okay, right, so let's move on. Engaging students online. I have, uh, I'm gonna show you examples of six different things I do and how I do them. So I hope that you can take away uh, some. If you think uh, that's rubbish, I don't, I'm not, that's not gonna work for me. Um, don't, don't just throw it away. Maybe the idea might inspire you because only you know your groups, only you know exactly um, whether an activity is gonna work or not. So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna, um, I've, I've been speaking a little bit about uh, how I use the chat box. I've been using it with you as well. So that is something that I do constantly on in my lessons or the workshops or whether it is teens or adults to make sure that we are keeping that engagement. I'm still here, I can see you, I can hear you, okay? Different types of answers. So um, another example, how are you feeling right now? Give me two adjectives in the chat box. How are you feeling? Okay, great. <laughs> I'm also hungry because it's really early here in, in Spain. <laughs> I'm also hungry. Um, a little bit tired, exhausted, yes. Oh, wow, yes. Um, yes, tired but interested. Okay, rushed, happy, confident, tired. Very good. Uh, yes, and, and you guys, you, you're not alone. Um, here, we're also... Um, you know, hearing the feedback from teachers and feeling that, oh, we're, we're, we're really stressed because we have to keep up doing whatever it was that we were doing before, which was stressful anyways. But now uh, we have to add the fact that it has to be online and that it we need to get to know the platforms. We need to get to know uh, the materials. We need to ensure that we're engaging the students. Um, so it's a feeling that uh, you guys are not alone. Um, my, my first tip, um, and the only thing I can say is that I tell the, all, the, all my teachers here is, um, I tell my, I have a mantra for myself and it is everything is gonna be okay, everything is gonna be okay. And I try to be as positive as possible um, because I read a few years ago when I was doing one of my last MAs um, about, I read a very interesting article about um, learned positivism. So you can learn to be positive and that really, that research showed that um, your attitude and your well-being in general does change when you try and see things from a different perspective. So um, that's an example of chat box. Let's move on because time is ticking, I know. Uh, participants features, uh, participants box features. So for example, um, I asked them a lot to give me a tick. For example, in Zoom, you know that you have a tick, you have a cross, you have slower, you go faster. I tend to tell them, okay, everyone, so if you agree, give me a tick and then I look at the participants box to keep an eye on everyone. Um, or if they're doing an activity that I know is a little bit uh, demanding, especially for example, if they're doing a reading or a writing before they do the full writing exercise at home, then I tell them, please give me a tick if you are okay, if you're comfortable, give me an X if you want my help. So I look at the participants box and then at the end of the activity, without, obviously they can see who gives the tick and who gives an, an X, or they can uh, chat, uh, they can send me a message privately, then I address the different questions and then we check again. Um, I'm, we're gonna look at Zoom virtual backgrounds um, that I have customized and some that I have downloaded and how I use them. We're gonna look at Jamboard. Um, I don't know if anyone is uh, aware of Jamboard. Um, if you are, can you can you tell me yes or no, if you know what it is in the chat box? Do you know what Jamboards are? No? Oh, great, because then that means that you're gonna be at least interested to know what the idea is about. Okay, wow, okay, okay, someone is? Great, great, that's great, okay. Uh, yes, good, good, good. Some people are excellent. Okay, um, we're going to look at that in a minute. So I'm going to keep the suspense there, uh, and then Google Docs and Google Slides. Okay, so this is an example of um, a not very good picture of me. Um, you know the expensive creams I wear 
don't seem to be working very well. So um, that background was the topic for that virtual background there for this lesson that I taught last week. In the chat box, was the topic, was the theme uh, for this lesson? Excellent, yes, uh-huh. And what do you think may be the subtopic for my lesson that day? This is, I'll give you a hint. It was a pre-intermediate class uh, preparing for Cambridge Key. Okay, okay, good, wonderful. Collaboration, modals, well done, Fiona. Uh, modals, help, Hobbies, teamwork, rules and instructions. Very good, Martin. Excellent. Um, Olympics, taking part, sports models. Excellent. Well done. So this is just as a warmer. You can use, a, a, um, I like using every lesson or every other lesson. Obviously, you cannot play, use all the tricks every single lesson. It would be exhausting. But depending on the topic uh, for the lesson that I'm doing, then I'd like to try and use something different. As a warmer, I would, once everyone is in, I would say, okay, so everyone uh, in the chat box, what's the topic? Duh, very simple, sports, good. What else do you think we may be talking about besides um, just the names of the sports? and then they do that. Um, you can also put them in breakout rooms. I know that uh, Blackboard, Blackboard Ultra, you have channels, uh, which is the equivalent of um, uh, breakout rooms, and also teams. Um, so in breakout rooms, one minute, I want you to write three things you expect to know about the, the lesson or, from, or get from the lesson. So this is just an example. Now in this link, um, don't worry about writing it down. If you want to write it down, it's fine. But um, uh, Sophie will share the, the slides. And I have downloaded the Zoom virtual backgrounds and also customize. I like customizing visuals myself um, and making them, making sure that I can use them. For example, this visual is customized for a background. Now, a tip for you to use virtual backgrounds is that you would need to resize them if they are not originally already a background. And the way you do that is by saving the picture and then resizing it to 1280 by 720 pixels, 1280 by 720 pixels. And that will ensure that your background is not stretched and it, that it doesn't look odd when you use it. OK, all those back backgrounds are there. Um, I like to use Pixabay. You probably know that website because it is copyright free. And I also recently became a member of uh, the, the Noun project. Um, all the black and white visuals that you can see here uh, they all come from uh, the Noun project. There's all free, but you can also pay for a subscription, which is absolutely worth uh, the investment. It's only 20 US dollars a year. I'm doing that uh, because then you have, I don't have to worry about uh, uh, given if you are a paid member you don't have to worry about um acknowledging the source of the picture if you are a free member you do need to uh do it and i'll show you how to do it very easily in a minute great so this is virtual backgrounds now the second one this is a jamboard a jamboard is basically a whiteboard interactive whiteboard free part of the google suite tools now my students love uh, doing activities with uh, Jamboards because um, although I'm on Zoom, all I need to do, just like with Google Suites, uh, just like with Google Docs or Google Slides or Google Forms, all I need to do is grab the link to share it, making sure that it says anyone with the link can edit it, then put it in the chat box, then automatically and synchronously at the same time, I can see everybody using it. In this case, this is just an example. I was doing um, this is an, a sample activity for my um, key to um, students um, on vegetables. And I also use this activity for teachers as an example on the course on teaching live online. So for example, this is vocabulary very important your task design remember more than anything more than an activity 
has the design is important. So first look at the vegetables in the picture and think of their names. Um, you can ask them to write them down on a note on, on their in their in their notebook uh, before they actually start doing it. This is to activate prior knowledge, to give them a chance to see if they understand and recognize any of the of the vegetables. Then number two, using the sticky notes below in pink, these ones over here, I prepared them super easy peasy. Um, then they can start dragging them and putting them in the uh, labeling the different vegetables, just as with this example over here for garlic. And then check the answers. We can go through them. You can do lots of things. I know this is a very simple activity, but if you're teaching academic English, you could do the same thing um, with the sticky, uh, the stickies using the whiteboard as a brainstorm activity. Everyone can, uh, you give them a topic, a discussion topic um, for their essay, and you ask them to write in the stickies um, on the board all at the same time. They can be adding, identifying the, the, the main uh, points in the question of the essay, which is very important very often they're not able to do that and that's why their essays um, you know lack focus so this is just one activity is Jamboard if you have a gmail account it's you already have it there all you need to do is go to your google drive then go uh, add something and then you have all the different options um, you can have as many Jamboards as you want for example here there are three and this is just one example you can move things around you can upload uh, pictures as you can see here on the left uh, you can add the stickies and you can also handwrite. Okay, so this is just one an idea. Another idea would be this one. Um, I'm sure many of you will recognize this is a Google uh, Doc. Same things. Um, what I do is I create, for example, this is um, one of the tasks that I created for uh, the course Teaching Live Online with my teachers that I'm, we're working on right now. And it is question number three. What are some, this is part of another activity, so don't worry, but just to give you the example, what are some of the benefits and challenges for your learners in video conferencing sessions? Then during the Zoom meeting or for example google meet or whatever platform you're using i grab the link to share share anyone with the link can edit this is super important because if you don't choose can edit the students will have access to it but they will not be able to edit it they will probably just be able to view it and then i can see in real time everyone in groups i give them three four minutes they can add their ideas now you can take the same idea back into your classroom with, with academic english or general english and ask them to write the pros and cons of an, of an essay brainstorm together as a group how they're going to write their um a discussion essay um or whether the different you know that for IELTS there are four different types of essay one is an opinion essay um, the, another one is a discussion plus opinion essay then a multi-part um, essay so depending on the type of task that you have then you can have people working together in class and then use those ideas to um, work on their uh, own essays at home but uh, the key is that they would be engaged and engaging in the lesson and also outside the lesson um, another one would be um, i also like using google slides you can see re probably recognize it again it's free and is part of the um google suite um Google Suite uh, of tools. Um, something that, if, okay, let me ask you a question in the chat box. What can you see that is different from in this Google slide? It's not a common Google slide. What do you think, what can you see if you can tell me? Okay, yes, absolutely. Uh, common box is longer, it's portrait oriented. Excellent. Absolutely. Now, I, what I really like about teaching live online is that we can create portfolios with all the students and over the school year or over these two weeks, uh, two months, for example, um, my students, they have been creating lots of 
uh, activities with information that they would normally do in class. So for example, in this case, um, I you can customize. What I like about Google Slides is that you can customize it. You can make it uh, look like an A4 piece of paper. Um, they, they can add the task, the, add their own questions, sorry, they can add their own answers, they can add their own links, and whenever it is ready, they can change the color if they want over here. And whenever they're ready, then they can download it as a PDF and is like a booklet. Um, especially the teachers that I work with, they are teaching primary and secondary school, and they've loved the idea of being able to uh, curate a portfolio over a period of time which uh, students can use. Now this one is something that you can also do with your students. It, it, um, it helps them, I mean it gives them a, se a sense of um, achievement because it's, they're, you know, they're going to be very proud of the amount of work that they're doing. Not necessarily only teens but adults as well. They feel like, oh look, you know, um, over X period of time I have been doing this, this is my own work, is probably not going to be perfect, but that's not the point. The point is they start using different tools, be engaged with those tools, revisit the information several times, which helps with retention, um, and then keep that. Right, so let me just move on. Those were examples of things that I have been doing. I hope that you can uh, take uh, that their help somehow to inspire you, but um, I would like to move on to the very, very important um, point. What do those visuals make you think of? Um, this section is going to be super important, I think, in terms of what I need to do to be able to engage to my students and to ensure a higher level of engagement. So I try to, cho to choose those two visuals um, because um, I think they evoke the idea of something. What do you think? Uh, what do those visuals make you think of? Maybe one or two words. Security, okay. Checklist, good ideas, yes. Privacy, individual goals, key takeaways, okay, that's very good. Um, inclusion, empowerment, key point and to-do list, absolutely. Keys to success, wonderful. Wonderful, thank you so much for, for participating. Yes, 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 yes. Um, what I had in mind was the key to higher online engagement is task design. It's not the tools. It's not the tools you're using. It's how you build that engagement into your activities. So having a clear outcome and understanding clearly who's doing what, uh, what they're doing, where they're doing it, when they're doing it, and how long. I'm going to give you an example so that you see it in practice. Um, this is the the, the um, uh, virtual background that I used before, and um, something very important that I also tell the students, and this is spe especially relevant for you in higher um, education and, 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 English, and English for academic purposes, which is acknowledging source, right? So this is something that I, I we insist that our students do if they're using, students and teachers, of course, if they're using uh, materials or specifically if they're using visuals. The minimum requirements for acknowledgement of, of a visual are, you need to say image by the source, in this case, I took this visual from open clip our vectors in the source at Pixabay and then do the same thing for all the other visuals. As I said before, uh, I'm going to go back to show you these visuals here that you can see, they are from the Noun project. It is a pro account, so I don't, I'm not required because I pay, I'm not required to acknowledge them. However, at the end of the presentation, then I would add credits for the images, okay? If they are co free copyright, for example, and they're in the public domain, uh, then um, this would be the minimum logical uh, activity. Now, looking at this, that's the theme was sports. The task outcome, this is how I design this task and um, I'm going to show you the example so that you see how it works in practice. Obviously for you and your students and your different levels, what you would need to do is just customize slightly. slightly. By the end of this task, you will have spoken and written about your favorite sports and its rules. Who? In pairs. I know I want them to work in pairs. Tell your partner about your favorite sport. So initially, I want them to speak only. What? I want you to think about the rules of your favorite sport. 
there's a, a full stop missing there. I apologize for that. Just realize that where um, they're going to do speaking in class, the writing, they're going to research outside class. Um, so you're integrating skills there when you're going to be, they're going to be speaking at revision stage of models lessons. So those of you who said models were spot on, well done. They're going to be writing at control practice stage of the lesson and then offline and how long I'm going to give them different periods of up to five minutes in the breakout rooms. So this is how I'm building online engagement into my lesson. Now, the lessons. Uh, when we look at these two pictures, so basically make sure that your learners, your learning outcomes um, are this way. In the chat box, tell me, what do these two pictures make you think of? Um, and I'll give you a clue. We usually say that aims or objectives or learning outcomes should be this way. What do you think um, I intend? to uh to say uh look over here there's a brain so brains are usually related to okay ideas elimination learner center very good excellent uh critical thought wonderful thank you so much um clear ideas cognitive uh okay uh ooh, very close yes 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 excellent cognitive engagement achievable Yes, you got some. Okay, some of them. Yes, 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 yes. Good. So they make sure that your learning outcomes are smart. Now, what does smart stand for? You already some some people already wrote achievable. So A is for achievable. What about the S M R T in your chat box? Just write them up. Very good. Yes, specific, excellent, measurable. Absolutely. Very good. Uh, achievable already said R. What's R? Okay. Excellent. Well done. Realistic. And the last one T. Excellent. You got it. Time bound. Well done. So specific. Um, this is the example just to show you how the process, the mental process I usually go through whenever I'm trying to ensure that I, there is involvement in my lesson. So specific, how is my task specific? Well, I know exactly that they need to speak and write about sports and rules. So I know exactly what it, uh, what it is. It's, they're measurable because I know who, what, where, when, and how long. And those parts are identifiable in the process. Achievable because the task comes at the right stage in the lesson, okay, in the process, they can actually do it. That's why I said I want you to first identify the sports in the warmer, think, activate prior knowledge, make them think about that. Then uh, they have to speak about the, their favorite sport. So um, it is something relevant to them, right? Um, then they need to write. The writing or the, and the research comes at the end. So you build up, you scaffold the activity so that they are actually able to do it. Same thing with an academic essay. You need to break it down into achievable chunks. Um, so especially for the weaker learners, only you know who needs more help in your classes. So you can do go through the same process to ensure that everyone is there is on board realistic speak and write about their favorite sports and rules they're going to be able if they if it is realistic if it is relevant for them they're likely to be able to say something regardless of how much they say or write and time bound i know exactly what i want to do with them and what i want them to do outside the lesson okay so this brings us to the end of my presentation i'm going to leave you with some food for thought and then we can move on to the questions now uh, questions for you that i think are important whenever you're planning your lessons and i understand that you're not going to be planning super extra mega engaging lessons every single lesson because you will have lots of different lessons however it's good to start thinking about these things because you can start building um you know bringing them into the lesson um as you plan so how what are my learning outcomes for this lesson i think that's the most important thing uh for any teacher to know exactly what they're doing in the lesson how can i put my students at the center of all activity how are tools i bring in enhance bring in enhancing my lesson or supporting my learning outcomes please note the 
the, the order. I haven't said and talked about tools and technological tools and digital tools for you to start using. No, it's more important to keep doing what we were doing before in the face-to-face -face classroom with what we have. And only when we are comfortable and we feel that we are already, you know, got our heads around it, then we start using and bringing in the big guns. How much have my students done outside the lesson in preparation? for the lesson how much are they doing individually in pairs in groups am i doing all the talking because online live online teaching lends itself very easily to blah 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 to just be in there talking to them um, and boring them and obviously it's, it's taxing and it's boring not only for them but for us who will be using the tool? Are you gonna use a Jamboard? Great, who's gonna use it first? Probably you, you need to do all the activities first, leading them, demonstrating, showing before you actually ask them to use them. When are they gonna use it? When in your lesson, why can they actually use it? And how can this, this tool foster learning and bring in the four C's of education? Can you tell me what the four C's are? Do you remember them in the chat box? What are the four C's of education? I'll, I'll give you one. C for collaboration. What are the other three? One is collaboration. The other three? Excellent. Yes, very good. Communication, creativity, critical thinking. Wonderful. Yes, very good. Okay, communication. Um, comprehension, not necessarily, but I think it's part of that. So it, it, I, would, I would say it's definitely valid. Uh, so the four C's of um, education. So um, communication, I always try and make sure that any activity has at least, includes at least two C's. So either it is communication and collaboration or communication and creativity or creativity and critical thinking uh, to ensure for myself as a teacher to ensure that my lesson has at least two of those elements. OK, so. What do those questions, those pictures make you think of? You know, you're probably thinking, oh, he's here he goes again with pictures. I love pictures because remember, a picture, a visual is worth a thousand words. And this is super important for students learning our language, learning English. Um, so what do you think these pictures make you think of? What do you think I want to say now? <laughs> Very good, Victoria. Yes. Okay. Uh, good, good. Wonderful. Yes, Monique. Thank you. Claire, absolutely. Yes. Yes, very good. Uh, yes, keep them coming. Thank you. Karen, absolutely. Yes, yes. Louise, good. Um, Tanya, Jenny, you were, uh, you're right. Yes. Basically, I just want to say thank you so much for bearing with me for these 54 minutes. Um, we're going to go on to the uh, questions, the Q&A now. Okay. Uh, before we move on to the Q&A, I just want to say that if you're interested in any of our courses on teaching live online or e-moderation, these are the dates. Um, there's a 15% discount using the code uh, for any of you at English Australia, um, English, English Australia members. Uh, please make sure that if you decide to join us on one of those courses, you do use that code and get your 15% discount. And uh, don't worry about the specific dates because, as I said before, Sophie will be um, using, uh, will be sharing the the the. The, the, uh, the a PDF of the slides, and um, you will have the information there in the link to the web to the virtual backgrounds. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Maybe it is a good idea now, uh, Sophie. If we start with the Q and A, um, I you can add your questions here. Um, let me just get my Q and A open. You're doing that there so that I can see the questions in full. Yeah, thank, thanks, Robert. And there were some questions further up, which I've bookmarked, so I can relay them to you as well. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yes. So a, a few people, just to get started, um, were asking about Jamboard, if you know of any alternatives for students in China, because I think Jamboard, um, some people are saying, is blocked for Chinese students. Ah, uh, that's right. Yes. Well, uh, alternatives for people in China. 
That's a difficult question. It's a tricky one because, for example, anything that you I may suggest may not work, and you may think that I just light through my teeth. <laughs> so um, I know that, for example, um, I did some training last year, uh, and two of the teachers were working for a very well-known institution in China, and they were participating in the in the course, and they were they said that they use WYSIQ. With Q, I think. Um, I don't think. I think they have a, a free version um, account uh, that you can use, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, what I think is that if people are in China, I know they may be able to use something that those teachers kept talking about was ensuring that students had a VPN. A, 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 um, a virtual private network and that they mentioned that they were able to get around some of those restrictions for for the websites by using one so uh, this is just hearsay from participants teachers participants in my courses i hope that that gives you an idea yeah and i'm going to put other people have um sent through some other ideas and i'll just share them in the chat with everyone now as well thank you okay I'll let Wait, you I'm... keep going answering the other questions now. Can you see them? Uh, uh, can I? Can they use Miro? Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Miro is also very useful. Absolutely, yes. Um, another whiteboard tool like Jamboard. Absolutely. Um, the questions: Where are they? Because I, I cannot. Is that the? Can they use Miro and Padlet? Question mark. I don't see any other questions. Okay, now there were a few further up, so I'm going to relay them to you because they've been coming, coming through um, ah, okay, very sorry. quickly. Can, can you tell us again the dimensions for virtual pictures, resizing? Absolutely. If you want to use, uh, if you want to use them as a virtual background, you need to make sure. Shall I write it? Can I write a type myself? Yep, no, if you I type can't. it into the chat and share it with everyone, that should work. Ah, into the chat. Yes, let me just open the chat and I'm going to share the dimensions there because it probably makes more sense. Make sure that after you save the picture, then what you can do is when you resize it, that the picture is 12, uh, 1280 by 720 pixels. Um, it's in the chat box now because then when you use it, it won't look odd. It won't be stretched. Uh, and look uh, horrible. Um, can you share how you make the Google Slides 8.4? Absolutely. When you go on to Google Slide, you need to go to Page Setup. Once you are on Page Setup, you need to click on Custom, where it says it, it has the default uh, Google, the, the default slide uh, landscape. Uh, um, size you need to click on custom and then you need to add uh the measurements for an a4 which are if i'm not wrong 860 uh a 827 i think by um 1169 if i'm not wrong for an, a, 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 a typical a4 letter uh, and then that automatically uh changes the shape to an a4 let me go up through the chat, see other questions. How do you do choral responding and pronunciation roles online? Good, good question, very good question. I do it exactly the same way that I do it in the classroom. However, I always start uh, with listen first. I do it myself a couple of times before I ask everybody to do it. Depending on how big the group is, then I would have, I would divide them into um, first five, next five, next five or um according to all the people with whose uh, la, uh name starts with an a with a b with a c obviously you need to plan how you're going to divide them if you have a big group but it's also possible um in talking about pronunciation i use a lot whatsapp recording or the or the, the their mobile phones um voice recording device we do lots of that and they do it in the following way i 
we do it in class and then for homework they need to read a story their own story or practice describing the pictures or practice giving their speech for 10 seconds 20 seconds 30 seconds or one minute as uh, or two minutes like for example on the IELTS exam they have to speak for two minutes two full minutes they need to record themselves listen to it make notes of things that they notice where they make mistakes and do it again at least three times and the reason for that is because research shows that repetition aids fluency your brain every time you do something the next time you do it especially if it is within a very short period of time um, is going to refine what you are saying that's why public speakers international speakers and people in general when they have to speak to audiences they rehearse their presentations i rehearsed this presentation at least three or four times in the last three days to make sure that i want i you know i was going to cover um, what i wanted to cover so um th that would be um, my piece of advice on, on pronunciation and drills online. Um, any other questions, uh, Sophie, that I have missed? Uh, uh, does Google Slide work on Windows or Mac only? No, Google Slides work on anything, any platform, even um, what is what is it? What's the free one? Um, Ubooks? Uh, I'm working here at home. I have. Um, I'm right now. I'm on a Mac, um, and at work I have a PC, a desktop PC. Google's, Google works with um, any platform. Um, sometimes they work better on some browsers, but that's different, okay? I tend to use Google Chrome because it's part of the Google family and usually it works seamlessly, okay? Any other questions? Do others use Flipgrid for speaking activities? Absolutely, well done. Thank you so much. Uh, um, Alex, excellent. Flipgrid is a great um, tool that is also free, and the free version allows to have very short video um, responses, and they create a Flipgrid. So absolutely, I, I use them mainly with teachers uh, for um, forum asynchronous forum discussions. Uh, especially when I can see that the questions would be very conceptual and therefore writing an answer would take a lot of writing and screen time. Okay, so well done. Thank you so much, um, Alex, for, for sharing that. Um, and Claire for sharing the, the link. Thank you. Uh, will you give us an example of this uh, can-do activity? Absolutely. Um, for example, at the end of this activity, now that we have finished the webinar, if I wanted, if I had a slide on that, I, I would probably look at, uh, I would say, my task would be, I'm going to give you a minute to think about the, the webinar and I want you to complete uh, the following sentences. I think that I can now do dot, dot, dot. Let's, let's try it out. Let's try it out. In the chat box, in the questions, uh, uh, that you were using, the same channel you were using to write your comments. Can you write what you feel you can do? Just one thing you feel you can do now, uh, thinking of the webinar. Now I can do dot, 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 and then you fill in the gaps for this activity, thinking of um, what we covered in the lesson, in this webinar. Okay, uh, I can see some examples. Okay. Uh, with I can dot dot dot. Okay, so that would be like a very improvised uh, right now how I can use can do statements. However, um, for you, knowing your core syllabus, knowing what you have to do, you can come up with your own can do statements that the students can uh, may only need to tick if they're depending on what you want to do. They can either complete them by writing dot, dot, dot and writing what they feel they can do at the end of the session or the lesson, or you can write them up and then use it as a way to gauge yourself the success of the lesson. How many are they able to tick and use it just as, an, as a way of measuring a little bit the success. Okay, any other questions? What was the reference you mentioned earlier? Okay, I'm gonna write it in the chat box. Is Hounsel, Hounsel et al, 2007, 
Um, it is an article, it's a guide actually about, they conducted some research on how to redress the balance between formative assessment and uh, summative assessment in higher education. I highly recommend it. They have, they suggest four strategies for that that are very useful and they give clear examples of how you can do it. Okay, Sophie, um, any other questions? Yeah, thank you. So <laughs> that was that was amazing. I think you covered so much, but also um, gave us some really exciting ideas that we can go away and try out. I love the visuals you used, especially for the predictions and the virtual backgrounds. Um, so thank you so much for coming to present to us today, Robert. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. I hope that I've managed yeah. to inspire you and something that Absolutely. I you know, tell people, always love everyone and love without measure. Love yourself, <laughs> love your students and everything will, you know, everything will fall into place. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's a nice thing to say. Actually, one of the um, people predicted that one of the C's was for compassion. I thought that was a nice guess. Absolutely. One of the yes, 14 absolutely. C's. And it must start with us. We cannot be compassionate if we don't, if we're not compassionate with ourselves. Oh. All right, Robert. Well, have a lovely day. Um, thank you. We thank you. Enter into our evenings, and everybody else have a lovely evening. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.